Apricadabra and Alaka Stash. It's me, the man, the myth, the mustache. <laughs> hey, what's happening, everyone? It's me, Tim, and I got a brand new series for you. Welcome to part one of What If Midoriya Had a Magic Quirk. Please sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. Zippity doo, zippity day. With that intro done, let's get this series underway. Midoriya could hardly hold still as he arrived at the museum he had heard about recently in the news. His excitement was quickly interrupted by his best friend, Katsuki Bakugo. Eh, why are you so excited about a place like this? The crimson-eyed child pouted as he crossed his arms. Just a dusty old building. But they have a new cool exhibit. Apparently it's all about magic. The freckled kid jumped in place. I wonder what they have. Maybe spell books and wands like in those movies we watched. It's probably boring, Zuku. I wouldn't get my hopes up. It may have been boring for Bakugo, but as Midoriya's emerald eyes glanced upon the exhibit, his breath was swept away. There were staffs and beautifully carved charms and gems on display around the room. Inside cases were ancient-looking tomes, open to reveal their yellowed pages filled with writing of all languages. The juniper-haired boy zipped around the exhibit, dragging an exasperated Bakugo behind. Zuku, come on! This place is so boring! Just a bunch of dusty junk. Let's check out the Egyptian stuff. At least we get to see a dead guy. Bakugo was desperate to escape from the room, which he found agonizingly bland. I it's not boring, Kachan. Look at this over here. Midoriya ran to another open book. This one doesn't have a label on it, but it looks super old. I wonder why it isn't labeled. Yeah, really cool, Zuku. Midoriya pouted at his friend's sarcasm. He looked over to the page it was open to. At that moment, his eyes began to glow and in front of his eyes, the words of the page shifted into Japanese. Kachan, look! The words are changing to Japanese! What are you talking about? Bakugo moved over, thinking something was happening. He was quickly disappointed as he did not see the same thing his friend did. Explosions crackled in his palms as he grew frustrated. There's nothing different, Izuku. Forget this. I'm gonna go see the mummy. No, really, I'll prove it! I can read one of the spells! He glanced at the page, choosing one at random, and began chanting. However, as he did, a voice seemed to mingle with his, words coming through that were completely foreign to him. Kimocha Objectia! Suddenly, Midoriya's right hand began to glow, scaring him. He yelped and tried to shake or wipe off the ethereal light. He shook his hand once, twice, and on the third time, a blast flew from his hand, striking the wall of the room and blowing it to bits. A gaping hole was left in which some of the passers-by peered through in shock. That was awesome! Bakugo's eyes reflected amazement at his best friend's newfound power. The wonder was mirrored in Midoriya's eyes as well as he looked down at his hands. However, the feeling was short-lived as the museum guards had fetched his teacher in order to contact his mother so she could take him home. By the next day, Midoriya found himself in a nearby clinic with his mother with one of the doctors trying to document his quirk. So, Izuku, do you think you can show me your quirk? The man was somewhat confused as the boy shook his head. Is something wrong? I, I don't know how to do it. I just read from that book in the museum and I ended up shooting that laser thingy. The freckled boy fiddled with his thumbs, looking down. I don't want to hurt anyone if I hit them. Hmm, perhaps some verbal trigger. That could make things more difficult. The doctor noted something down on the clipboard. If you want. I could try and contact the museum about the book. Maybe they'll let him look at it again. Inko looked at her son, who met her gaze with hopeful eyes. She sighed and nodded, rescheduling another appointment with the clinic in three days. When the appointment rolled around, the family was pleasantly surprised to see a familiar tome laying on one of the beds, familiar to Midoriya at least. That's the book! Mommy, that's the magic book I read from! Indeed it is. A curious situation surrounding it as well. The doctor picked up the grimoire, handing it to the boy. Apparently, this book was not in the museum collection, and hearing how it reacted with your quirk, the curator was kind enough to donate it to you. W wait so it's mine now? Upon receiving a nod from the doctor, the boy opened up the book, words immediately beginning to translate into Japanese before his eyes, just like last time. The glow of Midoriya's eyes when he opened the book were noted by the doctor, as he flipped through the yellowed pages. Ooh, how about this spell? He tried to show it to his mother, but she couldn't understand what language the words were written in. She just chose to nod. The juniper-haired boy took a deep breath 
and steeled himself as he placed a finger on the pages for his eyes to follow. Terra, Terra tremo erratico! The echoing quality of his voice created a crackling atmosphere in the air. Midoriya's hand was briefly coated in a sphere of jade light. Suddenly, the medicine cabinet across the room was torn from the wall, hurling to the ground. The freckled child quickly panicked, apologizing profusely to the doctor. Fascinating. A completely different ability than when he first exhibited his quirk. The doctor sat across from the Midoriya family. Mrs. Midoriya, if what I'm seeing is correct, whenever your son reads from that tome, it allows him to influence the world around him in various ways, dependent on the verbal trigger used. While Midoriya was confused, his mother was aghast at the potential his quirk possessed. Her eyes glanced at her son, who was shyly looking at the doctor, still a little bashful of accidentally damaging the clinic. Um, can I become a hero with my quirk? You could easily become one of the best heroes in Japan, rivaling All Might. Inko smiled appreciatively at the doctor, mouthing a thank you to him as she saw how ecstatic her son was. Now, about registering your son's quirk, Mrs. Midoriya, Due to the sheer versatility of it, the most accurate name would simply be Magic. Is that alright with you? With a quick confirming nod, her son's quirk was added to the roster of registered quirks. She also received a list of exercises and warnings about the possibilities of her son's quirk. A suggestion was written at the bottom for her to find a secluded place for him to practice the triggers for his quirk where he would cause the least destruction, and to ensure he did not use his quirk at school yet, as the two verbal spells he had were rather destructive. Over the years, Midoriya continued practicing his quirk in isolated areas, in parks or beaches, studying the spells from his grimoire avidly when he wasn't able to practice. For a while, school was alright for Midoriya, and his friendship with Bakugo continued to flourish. However, there was one problem that had begun cropping up in his junior high years. I call BS on you, Midoriya! One of the freckled teen's classmates slammed his hands down on the desk, glaring at him. You say you have a super powerful quirk, but never show it. I bet you're just bluffing to make yourself seem cooler. A few of the other students voiced their agreement, only to start whimpering as a certain atomic blonde's crimson eyes began glaring holes into them. Bakugo let his explosions crackle in his palm as he walked up to the other teen who was in front of Midoriya's desk. You callin' my friend a liar, you damn extra? He grabbed the collar of the student's shirt and hoisted him up in the air. So what if he doesn't want to show off his quirk? He could still wipe the floor with you in seconds. And together, we're gonna be the best hero duo in all of Japan. Ha, <laughs> yeah right. I bet he's just some quirkless loser. The stuttered retort had the explosive blonde rearing back one of his hands to punch the student he held in the air. Atem Fortem! An echoey voice swept through the room as an emerald glow encased both the boys and forced them away from each other. There! I proved they're not quirkless! Now will everyone quit it? The class was silent at the outburst from the usually meek teen. They quickly all nodded and turned away. A hand roughly slapped his back, making Midoriya hiss in pain. About time you shut him up, you damn nerd! I don't want to have a pushover for a partner after all! The juniper-haired teen simply huffed, smiling fondly at Bakugo, before sitting down as the bell finally rang, initiating the start of class. Months later, and the final days of junior high had arrived for the two childhood friends. Their teacher had been questioning his students' choice of future career, guessing they all obviously wanted to be heroes. Be real, Teach. Don't load me an abracadabra with the rest of these extras. Bakugo felt something slap the back of his head, before turning abruptly to glare at his freckled buddy. You shouldn't be so crude, Kachan. It's not an attitude befitting of a future hero. And would you please stop calling me that? Midoriya briefly rubbed his temples in annoyance as he held a hovering book in the air, the object being what had hit Bakugo. Screw you, nerd! I'll be a hero my way! Midoriya let out a small groan at both his friend's stubborn attitude and how he had completely ignored his plea. Ah, Midoriya, Bakugo, you both put down you wish to go to UA, correct? The teacher interrupted the two, smiling at them. I'm sure you both will make your dreams reality. Of course, was there any doubt? 
Bakugo reclined in his seat with a cocky grin, making Midori a sigh and shake his head good-naturedly before returning to his reading. Hey, I better see you bright and early tomorrow, nerd. We still have to practice for the entrance exams. Midoriya chuckled and nodded. All right, see you tomorrow, Zuku. Bye, Kachan. The two parted ways. Midoriya kept his eyes mostly on his book as he made his way home, not realizing the turn he took would lead to trouble. All he heard was the clatter of a manhole cover before a sludge-like being leapt at him, forcing its way into his mouth. In that moment, panic immediately set into Midoriya's heart. He struggled fiercely, squirming even harder as the voice came from the slimy thing, saying it would use him as a meat suit. Anger and helplessness flared within him as he clenched his fists tightly. He was already seeing black spots in the corner of his vision. He felt red hot with anger, as if this very being was heating up with rage. The villain suddenly cried out in pain as a horrible smell reached Midoriya's nostrils. He looked around, seeing steam emanating from his body, realizing his body really was growing hotter. Midoriya turned to the villain just as it attempted to lunge at the teen. Gallius Disruptus! He thrust out a single hand as it was enveloped in his signature jade aura. A strong gale materialized from his hand, sending his attempted kidnapper flying into the wall. The sludge villain managed to pull itself together for another attack, only to be interrupted by the trademark call of the number one pro hero of Japan. I am here! All Might, the symbol of peace, descended rapidly from the sky before delivering a devastating blow to the slimy criminal, blowing him to smithereens of goo. Are you alright there, young man? The towering man offered a hand to Midoriya, who took it reverently, easily being pulled to his feet by the hero. Y you're All Might! For several moments, Midoriya was silent, before his thoughts had finally fully processed the situation. You're All Might! I can't believe I got to meet you! C can you please sell my book? Midoriya thrust his tome out, open to one of the blank pages near the cover. His eagerness made the pro belt a loud laugh as he nodded, quickly autographing the grimoire. I caught the tail end of you defending yourself against that villain. Truly impressive work. The juniper-haired magician's jaw dropped at the compliment. All Might thought he was impressive. With a quirk like that, I'd expect to see you in hero ranks very soon. Perhaps we'll meet again in that time. The hero nodded his head at the freckled teen before picking up a soda bottle off the ground, gathering the bits of the villain before leaping off. For a few moments, Midoriya just stood there, a giant grin on his face. He finally shook himself out of his stupor, and a smirk took its place. Oh, Kachan is going to be so jealous when he hears about this. After a brief summary of the previous day's events and a jealous Bakugo trying to lie about the envy he felt towards his friend, the duo began to go through their training routine. They had a decent mix between physical training and quirk training. Midoriya being a little bit better at the latter. The versatility of his quirk made it to where he needed to train multiple things, all the better for his friend to train against. At the same time, Bakugo thrived in physical training, knowing the perfect workout regiments and diets to ensure they were at their physical peak. This was another important part, as it seemed Midoriya's quirk took various amounts of his stamina, meaning he had to be prepared for whatever physical drain would occur. The two had been training for months together, ready for the UA entrance exams. And now that they were both finally done with junior high, they were going to be able to dedicate far larger amounts of time to their training. Time passed quickly for the two friends, each day filled with some sort of training as they prepared for the hurdles of the UA entrance exam. As the day of the test arrived, the duo found themselves at the gate of the prestigious academy, both of them looking fiercely determined. We're finally here, eh, Zuku? It seems like it, Kachan. The two exchanged a look sharing a brief smile, and began to walk to the entrance, only for Midoriya to immediately stumble over a small ledge and begin to fall. The freckled magician inwardly cringed at his lack of coordination, fully expecting to eat concrete. However, he was pleasantly surprised to open his eyes, wondering why he hadn't hit the ground yet, and saw he was floating in mid-air. He heard someone apologizing for using their quirk on them, a hand pulling him up so he was back on his feet. He met eyes with a brunette girl who smiled at him, 
saying she was sure he didn't want to face plan right before taking the entrance exams. He thanked her profusely before she ran ahead, waving at him. Ha! We haven't even gone in, and you already need someone to save your ass! Shut up, Kachan, or I'll find that spell that sealed your mouth shut! Bakugo snorted indignantly, turning his nose up playfully at his best friend. Midoriya huffed at his best friend's actions before heading inside with him to begin the entrance exams. The first part of the exams was simple enough. It was a basic written exam covering varying topics. Both Bakugo and Midoriya didn't worry too much about them. Their exceptional intelligence and studious natures left little for them to really worry about. It was as they moved on to the next part that a bit of tension began to leak into their stance. Yu Wei had not given anything away on what the practical portion of their exams would be, making it impossible to train or prepare for a specific situation. Midoriya only hoped that all the training he and Bakugo had put in would finally pay off. They arrived in a room full of people, where present Mike, the voice hero, stood in front on a raised platform. The pro explained that the practical exam would be a point-based system where they'd gain points from fighting against villain robots. He proceeded to reveal pictures of three of the machines. Midoriya began muttering, making note of the robo-villain's shapes and any potential weak spots to exploit. He had to limit himself to how much energy he used, or he could very well end up passing out in a dangerous situation. Wait a minute, sir! A blue-haired teen from the crowd stood up stiffly. You've only shown us three robots! I thought there were four variants! And you, over there! The bespectacled adolescent then turned his gaze towards Midoriya. The freckled magician met eyes with the other boy, stopping his muttering for a second. Your muttering is extremely distracting to the other people here. And what is that book you are holding? Bakugo stood up, ready to defend his friend, despite said friend most likely not wanting it. What use do you have of such a thing? Did you plan on using it to cheat in the exams? Hey, go screw yourself, you stiff! Bakugo stepped in between the two. The nerd's muttering may be annoying, but it's how he processes information, so leave him be. And that book helps him use his quirk. Something that isn't against the rules. Present Mike was quick to de-escalate the situation, quickly changing the topic by revealing the hulking figure of the last robot, the Zero Pointer. He suggested the students avoid that particular robot and simply run away. He then sent them off to find which testing field they would be at for the exams. Midoriya quickly found his and hurried off. As he arrived, Midoriya was shocked to see a gigantic replica of a cityscape around him. As he looked around, he saw the familiar brown hair of the girl who had helped him earlier this morning. Just as he was about to go and greet her, a hand fell roughly on his shoulder. You were going to distract that girl, weren't you? The bespectacled teenager stood stiffly, staring suspiciously at Midoriya. I cannot allow you to do such a thing! Midoriya nearly growled at the accusation. Years of being Bakugo's closest friend did not do wonders for his own temper. Just as he was about to find a spell to send the other participant flying into a wall, the voice of President Mike called out around the crowd, all of them beginning to move to the starting line. After a few moments of everyone waiting to be called to begin, the voice hero berated them slightly, telling them that heroes could not always afford to wait before leaping into action. This got everyone moving. Midoriya shook himself out of a minor stupor before running into the cityscape. The first robot he came across was a flying two-pointer, making his job rather easy. Zephyrius Expectorum! As Jade Light coated his hand, a whirlwind flew out and engulfed the flying machine, forcing it to slam into a nearby building. One down, and a lot more to go! As the time limit ticked by, Midoriya slowly racked up points, already beginning to feel a drain from running around while using his quirk. Suddenly, an alarm began blaring, as President Mike announced that the zero-point robot was being released. Upon seeing the hulking mass of metal, the freckled magician was fully prepared to hightail it out of there, only for his ears to catch a familiar voice calling for help. His head whipped around, and he saw the brunette who helped him earlier, now trapped under rubble. He quickly ran over, flipping through his book to find a spell to free her. However, the sound of the approaching robot was getting too close for comfort. Thinking quickly, he flipped to a page that said, Golem Creation. Silicus Miles Satisfaction!
He raised a glowing hand to the earth near the robot's treads. Arms shot up from the earth, and ape-like creatures with green runes across their bodies drew themselves from the ground. Upon his command, they threw themselves at the treads of the Zero Pointer, some letting themselves be ground into the gears to come up the inner workings, while the others pushed back against the flow of the tread. Seeing the robot was temporarily immobilized, Midoriya flipped until he came across the perfect spell. I'll have you out of there in no time! Erratico! Tendrils of jade energy surrounded the girl in a cocoon of jade light, allowing him to pull her out safely. While still in her bubble, Midoriya sprinted out of there, just as the robo-villain broke apart the large stones of the rock creatures in its gears and ran over the others, reducing all the golems to dust. He panted as they both finally arrived at a safe spot away from the giant beast of metal. The girl thanked him profusely. Just as he was about to go try and get more points, after assurances from the brunette team that she was fine, a buzzer sounded loudly, announcing the end of the practical portion. A pit of anxiety formed in Midoriya's stomach as he and Bakugo exited the campus. He held his grimoire in his hands, fingers drumming along its cover while they walked. All right, nerd, what's up with you? You only do that crap with your book when you're worried. Midoriya sighed, running a finger down the spine of the tome. I'm just worried that, since I helped that girl, I wasn't able to get enough points. He sent his gaze skyward as he frowned. Don't get me wrong, I don't regret saving her. That's the duty of a hero as well. I just hope I didn't hurt my chances of getting into UA with you, like we planned. Oh, shut up, nerd! You probably did great! Midoriya's eyes looked up to meet Bakugo's. UA would be stupid not to let both of us in. And when we do get accepted, we'll work together to be the best damn hero duo in Japan. Got it? Got it! The two bumped their fists together. A smile bloomed on each of their faces. The wait for the letters from the Hero Academy was agonizing. However... The arrival filled Midoriya with a large amount of anxiety. The Bakugo and Midoriya families had gathered at the former's house to have a revealing party of sorts upon the arrival of their results. The two childhood friends looked at the envelopes in their hands with a myriad of emotions flung across their faces. C can you open up your letter first, Kachan? Tch, whatever, Abracadabra. The juniper-haired magician didn't comment on the nickname, waiting on Bakugo to open his letter first. Rather than a paper slipping out, a small disc clattered onto the table. It sat there for a second, before releasing a soft blue glow and powering on, revealing a hologram of All Might standing before them. He announced that Bakugo had done wonderfully, and he was accepted into the UA Hero course. The device then displayed a scoreboard of the highest-ranking participants, the explosively tempered blonde only being second to one person. No way! Did you really? The blonde was interrupted as his emerald-eyed friend quickly ripped open his own letter and began his own holographic message. The symbol of peace was present in Midoriya's as well, declaring his admission to the hero course. And with his score being the highest of all the participants of the entrance exams in both the written and practical. Midoriya was briefly confused at how he had gotten such a score when All Might explained there was a hidden point system in the test. A rescue point system. A clip of the girl from the test played. She had offered her own points, only to be politely declined and reassured by President Mike that her savior would be fine. A display of the scoreboard appeared before all of them, confirming Midoriya's placement. I did it. We did it! We did it, Kachan! Midoriya jumped for joy, laughing in relief and excitement. Bakugo laughed and stood up as well, holding out a fist for his friend to bump. Of course we did! Was there ever any doubt? We're gonna take this world by storm, Zuku! The two fist bumped, goofy smiles on both their faces. Don't expect to keep that rank for too long, though, you damn nerd. I'll be coming for that ranking. I wouldn't expect anything less from my future partner. Both of their eyes were filled with a burning passion as they settled back down to celebrate their acceptance into UA. Today was the beginning of Izuku Midoriya's and Katsuki Bakugo's journey to be the best hero duo Japan would ever see. And that's our video for the day, so thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, 
there's a little bit of housekeeping for you. First, We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description. So please feel free to check out all the other incredible content and projects our team creates. Second, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone who was involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. And that's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have an amazing day. And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome! This has been Tim, Mustache out!